Love and Light. This is Healthy Talk Show, recording live on Friday, December 20th, 2019. I'm Robert. And I'm Marissa. Show notes will be over at healthytalkshow.com forward slash 43. On this episode of Healthy Talk Show, we have big tech companies getting sued over child labor. And energy from space! But first... A new study revealing half of all Americans will become obese within the next 10 years. Harvard researchers say by 2030, one in four Americans will be severely obese, meaning they will be at least 100 pounds overweight. Researchers made the prediction based on 26 years of self-reported body mass index data and say to reverse the trend, Americans must collectively adopt healthier eating habits. The New England Journal of Medicine projected U.S. state-level prevalence of adult obesity and severe obesity. A little study here. Anything Yeah, let's add? let's go to the chart. Got it. The chart's the easiest way to kind of break it down with what they've been observing. And so if you look mm-hmm. on the left side of the graph, they have about a 20% prevalence of overall obesity. That's a BMI greater than 30%. And that was in 1990 with kind of severe obesity so what they said was over 100 pounds or greater or bmi of greater than 35 so 100 pounds overweight roughly and i think in 1990 that was about zero to ten percent and then i don't think anyone's surprised but we've seen that prevalence slowly creep up and rise over the years so you can see from the chart they kind of tracked it by state and uh, the southern states tend to have kind of a higher prevalence in general. Yeah. <laughs> 2030 does not look good for the southern states. It doesn't look good for a lot, but yeah, this is a trend that we're all aware of, but are not doing anything about. And something else they also mentioned that mm-hmm. the, the BMI was increasing a lot among women, black, non-Hispanic adults, and low-income adults. Mm. And I, it all goes back to we've been aware of that, but... We're not doing anything yeah. to fix it. So, yeah. You know, we lost a lot of weight. Yeah, it's a lot of work, though. Small steps, too, though. Small batch cooking. You got to do a lot of your own cooking. Can't be eating out. Yeah, we walk a lot. People think we're crazy, but... Everybody thinks we're crazy. It's, you know? it's a lot of work. Business insider Chinese gangs are spreading African swine fever to make big bucks on infected hogs. Chinese criminals have been exploiting the country's African swine fever crisis by intentionally spreading the disease to force farmers to sell their pigs for a low price before smuggling the meat and selling it on as healthy stock, state media has reported. Sometimes the gangs spread rumors about the virus, which is deadly to pigs, but in the more extreme cases, they are using drones to drop the infected items into farms, according to an investigation by the magazine China Comment, which is affiliated to the state news agency, Waji dotting opportunities for the criminals to exploit. Man. Very interesting. Yeah. This is not really being reported on. No. Any of the mainstream media. At least I haven't heard. Well, the African of. swine fever is still not really being. Yeah. It's not too well. Something going on there. That's a... Don't know what. A little upsetting that people are, of course, exploiting that, but... Yeah. yeah. I think everything can become a black market. Ex- yeah, everybody. <laughs> yes. If there's money yeah. to be made, someone's going to find a way to uh, make it. It's, uh, and speaking of that, WCVB, <laughs> Channel 5 Boston, how Facebook is able to track in-store purchases for online advertising. If you're hitting the mall this weekend to shop for the holidays, Facebook may be tracking your purchases. Reports that the social media platform, with help from retail partners, is closely watching what users are buying, not just online, but in brick-and-mortar stores, too. What? Oh, my goodness. What? Facebook's watching what you buy in physical stores? What? Let's businesses send it information about what you purchased. According to Business Insider, retailers are teaming up with the social media giant, offering Facebook personal information in order to create targeted ads. Wow. Retail companies sending names, phone numbers, email addresses, and more, along with what products people purchase. Facebook is then using this information to identify the user in its database to target them with that business's ads. The main way that Facebook makes money is by selling ads. And the reason that it's able to uh, really dominate the online ad industry is because it controls so much personal information and data about its users. Very disturbing. Can, can we listen to that again? Yeah. 
It's how Facebook makes money. Let's go yeah. back. Here we go. To target them with that business's ads. The main way that Facebook makes money is by selling ads. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. all you need to hear, actually. But we can continue. That's <laughs> the main way Facebook <laughs> makes money, because guess what? Nothing's free. I was just about to say that. <laughs> That's kind of disturbing. Yep. Healthytalkshow.com slash support. And the reason that it's able to uh, really dominate the online ad industry is because it controls so much personal information and data about its users. Facebook is confirming the practice, saying retailers are able to reach their customers with ads on Facebook by sharing offline events like an in-store purchase, saying this is standard for the industry. When asked, stores like Macy's praise the collaboration as a way to fuel our growth. That's kind of disgusting. Yeah, Macy's loves it. This is great. Yeah, what? fuel our growth. <laughs> fuel the growth. <laughs> what about privacy? And yeah, of course, get it growth. It's not about I'm, privacy. Yeah, it's got to grow. I'm sure this data is not being protected. And... Yeah, Facebook says you can opt out, and they're saying to let you control yeah. your ad preferences and BS. But do you ever really? Opt yeah, they out? they lo- last week we reported they leaked freaking hard drives with their employees' personal data on it, yeah. unencrypted. Are we really trusting Facebook? I know. Uh, all right. Report from a few weeks ago, November 25th, 2019, CBS New York. Parents urge lawmakers to block proposed HPV vaccine bills. Should school children age nine and above have mandated immunization against the sexually transmitted disease known as HPV, human papillomavirus, without requiring their parents' approval? I need to hear that question one more time. I was a little confused there. We're talking about HPV vaccine? Yeah, let's, one more time. Let's Should school children age nine and above have mandated immunization against the sexually transmitted disease known as HPV? Nine and above? Nine's a little young. Yeah, and then without their <laughs> yeah human papillomavirus without requiring their parents' approval. What? Good old Gardasil. Without requiring their parents' approval? Oh yeah operation of pharma and state um, people want the right to choose what goes into their children's bodies yeah so whoa, just- whoa stop it there yeah my body my choice why why is that go for babies and abortion which i'm yeah. totally fine with yeah. birth, birth control yeah but not vaccines oh well especially the hpv vaccine yeah that's not even that not air it's not airborne it's not anything that you can precise it's, for you. it's you kind of have to have sex in order to get it yeah. So I don't think we have to worry about that with nine-year-olds, but if you do, then yeah, goes back to parenting. Issues. Yeah. Jessica Rudin recently began her social media campaign. More than 82,000 have signed her petition slamming the proposed HPV requirement in schools. The Centers for Disease Control Studies show spikes in cervical cancers and say science is solid that the vaccine works, best administered before sexual activity begins. Some New York lawmakers are co-sponsoring two bills. Why not give our young people the opportunity to guard against, protect themselves against, anal and cervical cancer? It, to me, it's a no-brainer. I don't understand why we would leave this one out. What the well, to you, it's a, why is that a no-brainer? What's well, the path of logic on that? I do not yeah. understand. And it's available so people can decide if they want to protect yeah. themselves. But why do we have to why push is, it? Why yeah. do we have to mandate it? It's very strange. Very strange. New York State schools already require children, regardless of parental approval, to be inoculated against more than a dozen diseases, including hepatitis B, which can also be sexually transmitted. Advocates now want the HPV vaccine added to this group and enforced by law. Woo! Dang. Very interesting. That was an old report, though. American Society of Clinical Oncology annual meeting 2019, 13 years after the HPV vaccine was introduced, U.S. uptake remains low. Hmm. Hmm. So that was in June when they came out with this report. That Okay, and then now they're pushing it in November. Yeah. So Maybe that's the issue. They just got to sell this shit. Yeah, because they're, they're saying that despite them, of course, doing that nice marketing campaign. Yeah, oh, they were so- in like Holland or somewhere there. Somewhere around there. They were giving iPods and stuff to young oh, te- oh. teens. Oh, yeah. It was big. Oh, That's yeah. Bad. Oh, they were doing some crazy stuff. Yeah. Apple-specific products, too. Mm. Yeah. Very disturbing. Only only 49% of people have gotten the vaccine. Yeah, there, it's not. I've heard the side effects are pretty brutal, and a lot of people's failing on it as well. Yeah. I use a condom. 
<laughs> and, and well, you bring up another good point. Yeah, is what about if you're not sexually active at all? Yeah, you, you don't. You don't want to. Again, participate? are we assuming that nine year olds are sexually active? Yeah. That's really young to be sexually active. People could abstain. People could be waiting mm-hmm. for marriage. And yeah, you know. and we've. I know people that have freaking gotten the HP vaccine had really bad side effects. Yeah. So it's not. It's not this. Again, everything's not safe for everybody, especially the HP vaccine. That's one of the most disputed ones. That's the one. That's one of the most dangerous ones that have the most side effects, at least from what I've heard. Yeah, um, I mean, of course, the argument that, you know, it still protects you against cancer, but let people make their own decisions and evaluate the risk for themselves. Yep. I, I don't understand why everything has to be a mandate. Yeah, well, you got to push it, <laughs> sell it, make the money. It's true. Always about the money. Yep. All right. K-I-R-O-7 News Fallout Over Performance at Homeless Conference. This is all of the video we can show you. Whoa. The rest we had to blur. Now, in fairness, the video wasn't that bad. S- some pasties. But there's nothing exposed. Nothing shown. From what I saw in the original video. But we don't want to cut two videos to go. It's just stupid. This is the strip show transgender performer Beyonce Black St. James put on for homeless advocates attending All Homes annual conference at South Seattle College. I got a contact from an anonymous tipster uh, who provided me with video from inside the conference. We got the video from Christopher Rufo, a researcher at Discovery Institute, a nonprofit think tank in downtown Seattle. He posted the video and his outrage online. And it's almost incredible to believe that this is funded by taxpayer dollars uh, right here in King County. Oh, man. How much was that performance? Ooh, we, I don't know. <laughs> the person who... They're going to have to figure that one out. Yeah. Anonymously, did that person explain why it was being sent to you? Yeah, I think it's just a sense of frustration. The person who hired the dancer was Kira Zilstra. The 40-year-old advocate had been acting director since last January of All Home, the agency that coordinates King County's homeless services. After the video surfaced, she was placed on leave late last week. King County officials announced today she resigned. <laughs> of course she did. Damn, Damn got caught. Shit, time to, yeah. roll, time to roll out. <laughs> what the heck? This is a perfect opportunity to break up allhome.com. Anger over the issue boiled over during a Seattle City Council meeting to discuss oh, the creation of a first ever regional homelessness authority in King County. Allowing employees to get their cheap thrills at the expense of innocent homeless faced with another cold winter. Ooh. Wow, they're all just enjoying that lap dances. Yeah. Like the Fox News uh, headline on this one. Fox News area homeless, Seattle area homeless director resigns after transgender dancer strips, twerks, and gives lap dances at annual conference. Yeah. Does not Uh, look good. uh, Yeah, it doesn't. And you know, (laughs) I could speak to this specifically. I used to work in the homeless sector and they would, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. It's does Every, all this crap is just wasting money yeah. at the expense of homeless. And people are starting to ask questions. We've been throwing money at this homeless issue. Yeah. And now they're throwing money at dance lap dances yeah. at their little events. Why do they need to have their little events? Why do they need to have lap dances at their little events? What is... Yeah, how is that helping <sighs> the homeless? It's not. They're just no. wasting. They're just sitting in their castles and they're... Oh, yeah, the homeless. I'm yeah. helping them by... You know, I pushed this through. I signed this. Oh, that's going to help the homeless. No, you're not helping the homeless. Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. Moving uh, on. Yeah, next thing. Yep. Wikipedia. We're going to show you someone. Stephen L. Quas. The reason why is because what he's about to say sounds a little crazy. <laughs> Stephen Lloyd Quas is a retired United States Air Force Lieutenant General. He last served as Commander of the Air Force Education and Training Command, Joint Base San Antonio Randolph, Texas. In that role, he was responsible for the recruiting, training, and education of Air Force personnel. Raised in La Mirada, California, Quas was commissioned in the Air Force upon graduation from the Air Force Academy in 1986. After completing a Master's of Public Policy from Harvard's Kennedy School of Government. He was assigned to undergraduate pilot training and earned his pilot wings in June 1989. General Quast has served as military aide to the United States Vice President and completed a National Defense Fellowship. Okay, so he's fairly qualified. And I just wanted, to, I, because what he's going to say sounds a little crazy. He's talking about Space Force. 
Hillsdale College, Stephen Quast, The Urgent Need for U.S. Space Force. But the reason space is so powerful is not that it just has a military application like a machine gun. It's because it will transform the four major engines of economic growth that have been consistent throughout mankind. Transportation, information, manufacturing, and probably most important, the ability to deliver that transportation and information with energy. Energy, the seed corn of all development, all growth, all survival, survival, energy. So energy, transportation, information, and manufacturing, these are the things that change humanity, that will change world power, and they are descending upon us in ways that are very unique. The technology is on the engineering benches today, but most Americans and most in Congress have not had time to really look deeply at what's going on here. But I've had the benefit of 33 years of studying and becoming friends with these engineers and these scientists. This technology can be built today with technology that is not developmental to deliver any human being from any place on planet Earth to any other place in less than an hour. I heard that. What did he just say? He just said the technology exists to transport one human being another to another to one place on the planet to another and within an hour. Yeah. He just said that. I'm not sure what that means. Are we talking like <laughs> Star Trek? Because that's that's the first thing that it's comes quite to a mind. wild claim. Yeah. But that he made it. So I, I don't know. Is he crazy? These engineers and these scientists. This technology can be built today with technology that is not developmental to deliver any human being from any place on planet Earth to any other place in less than an hour, to deliver Wi-Fi from space where you never need a cell tower to connect, to deliver energy from space where you never have to plug your phone in. And energy from space? Hmm. Yeah. Very interesting. Hmm. Yeah. The trickle charges, and you can use that energy over time. It can be applied to cars, to houses. The technology of Edison and Tesla that we live with in our energy environment, our paradigm today, is expensive, it's dangerous, and it's wasteful. Plug it into the wall, but yet that's all what we all do because we are used to paradigms. The power of space will change world power forever. And it doesn't have to be a big country to do it. It can be a small island country, let's say New Zealand. Because the technology, if optimized, can change world power, and there's nothing you can do if you don't have that power. The nature of power. You either have it, and your values rule, or you do not have it, and you must submit. We see that play out again and again in history, and it's playing out now. Technology is power, Yeah. according to this guy. I wonder why you mentioned New Zealand like that. Just yeah. I was curious, but... Because of their size, maybe? Maybe yeah. if they're technologically, if they get technologically advanced, they can take over everything because of space. I have it, another clip from him. Yeah. From the same thing at Hillsdale College. The biggest trap of culture is mindset. And we get trapped in a mindset, like electricity, that it has to be that way. Our children will be plugging into a wall when the technology does not need to be that way. But here's why space is so much more powerful and why this question of a space force is so important. It's because we have competition today. If the development of space to do these things that I just described to you, transform the trans trans uh, transportation economy to be able to deliver anybody anywhere on planet Earth in less than an hour, transform the energy market where everybody can trickle charge their batteries and capacitors to power anything on planet Earth from anywhere without any power lines, any power plants, trans transform information where you can get information about what's going on around you and you don't need to be near a city or near a cell tower because you're delivering it from a network in space that can deliver it to every human being. And that we can manufacture things in space using the vacuum and zero G to not only do research medically, but to build facilities and structures in ways we could have never done before and deliver them as light as a feather anywhere on planet Earth for pennies on the dollar of transportation costs in a linear 
sea, land, and air friction environment. <laughs> so hmm. a lot of things. Yeah, but it wasn't totally crazy. No, was, and zero point energy. People talk about Tesla coil and the orig- not the car company, but Tesla inventor. Yeah, Nikolai Tesla. And you know, zero point energy. Big into that. They, a lot of people claim that he was actually killed for that, and he developed it, and they destroyed all his papers and stuff. There's a documentary on Netflix about it. Pretty interesting. I'm sure. Probably is. Yeah, but there, there is some, I mean, theoretical physics, physicists are looking into mm-hmm. that sort of thing. They just haven't been able to prove it, and it, uh, it's yeah. hard to align it with our current understanding of quantum mechanics. But space yeah. is so under, under we don't yeah. know anything about it, so... Maybe there is something up there. Maybe there is something. There is a way to. Yeah. Everyone's using solar panels right now to harness the energy of the sun. <laughs> Maybe there's a more effective way. Yeah. We don't and, know. And he mentioned something about a vacuum, and that's that's not crazy. If people have kind of speculated, oh, if we could maybe do this in space or near a black hole, we could get some sort of zero point energy. I don't know, but. Yeah. It is. It is interesting. It's good to think outside the box. Think outside the paradigm. Yeah, think it, outside your paradigm. It also reminds me of World War II and how, uh, you know, there was a lot of scientific innovation during that time because the government put a lot of money into military and science inventions. So this yeah. could be a good thing for scientists and physicists. Can Some I, say the next war is going to be fought in space <laughs> with the I, Space Force. Yeah, I don't know about that. Oh. I, I look for at least scientific invention, oh, inventions, okay. hopefully. Eh, okay. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> Moving on to our main story, CBS News, top tech companies sued over child cobalt mining deaths in Congo. Kids are still doing the unthinkable in the DRC, backbreaking work even for adults. But a world away in Washington, there's new hope for the children in a lawsuit filed against major American tech companies who use the cobalt. The suit filed against Apple, Google, Dell, Microsoft, and Tesla. Very good. Apple, wow. Google, Dell, Microsoft, and Tesla. That's a lot of big companies. Dang. Huh? All of them. Got them all there. Woo! For the cobalt. Accuses the companies of knowingly benefiting from and aiding and abetting the cruel and brutal use of young children in the DRC to mine cobalt. Cobalt is used in almost every electronic device powered by batteries, from smartphones to electric cars. Anything powered by batteries. Think about that. That's Anything a lot powered by batteries. All the Teslas, all the Priuses. All your electric cars, phones, laptop, ba- everything. You have to also think about how this would translate to if we want to go to all these battery systems that people are talking mm-hmm. about. You need more cobalt. You need more cobalt. So this is going to be a problem if we cannot mine it. We're cheap. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, if we can't mine it without slave labor. <laughs> 14 children who were injured or killed while mining are being represented by human rights lawyer Terry Collingsworth's firm. We traced the supply chain back from the mine where the children were either killed or maimed and uh, have traced it back up to these companies. The suit calls for companies to take responsibility for child miners and their supply chains and change the way they source the metal. We contacted all five companies for comment. Apple said they've led the industry in standards and removed six cobalt refiners who don't meet those standards in 2019. Dell said it never knowingly sourced operations using any form of child labor and is currently investigating these allegations. You know what's funny about that Dell statement? Just think about personal responsibility of the people buying the devices. They can apply that same logic. We didn't know the cobalt. Well, you bought the device. You're buying these devices. You have the money. You have the power. You make the decision. Yeah. As the consumer. Isn't that the way it's supposed to work? It should be. Google, Microsoft, and Tesla have not yet replied. Yeah, I don't think Tesla's going to reply. Yeah, what are they going to say? Yeah, what are they going to say? They have, they have a lot of batteries. Use, they use big-ass batteries. Yeah. You're not going to hear anything from Tesla on that one. They got the walls. They got everything, yeah. And they're, uh, they're always no. talking about selling you extra batteries. Yeah, yeah more batteries? You want, a, you want a higher capacity battery? Yeah. Aye, aye, aye. Well, well, it's coming to light, hopefully. People are going to be a little more aware. Hopefully. Got another clip from this. Yeah. 
Well, we've been speaking to our sources there who are working with these children, trying to rescue them from the mines. And they say conditions are as desperate as ever, that basically nothing has changed in almost two years, despite all these promises um, to reform the process. And it's very, very concerning because you must understand that these children not only work in terrible conditions, they're not going to school. So they are not receiving an education. It is backbreaking work. You know, even adults battle with this hand mining. These children, some as young as 10, even four-year-olds who can't carry the heavy loads but are there picking the stones, even the little ones on their mother's back who are really too young to work are breathing in these toxic fumes. They are everywhere you go. The United Nations estimates that over 40,000 children have been used in child mining and if you consider that over half the world's cobalt comes from the Democratic Republic of Congo, yeah half the world's cobalt and there's a problem oh yeah that is very worrying indeed and because of the murky supply chain and the fact that no real effort is made to differentiate child mined cobalt from legally mined cobalt it's why would there be a yeah. reason to differentiate one's cheaper Ooh, let's just get the cheaper one ah, such bullshit very difficult then to assess where this cobalt is coming from, and it could well end up in any of our devices, from smartphones to electric well, of cars. It does, and it is yeah. in all of our devices. We, we can't just pretend, oh, I don't yeah, know if it's in my... Oh, yeah, it's definitely it not in my iPhone. No, it definitely is yeah. in your iPhone. 100% uh, sure in your Apple device. They're the ones listed on the lawsuit, so you can be sure. Yeah. Also, I liked on that video, the, the sh thing that they were showing about the Democratic Republic of Congo. Oh, uh, contains vast mineral wealth, but it's also a hot spot for violence, civil war, and Ebola. Hmm. Wonder why? Wonder why? <laughs> because everyone wants a piece of How that How about pie. we read the first point again? Contains vast mineral wealth and natural resources, and then hot spot for violence, civil war. Wow. Okay. Sound like the Middle East a little bit? I don't know. Destabilize yeah. people? Oh, yeah. gee, I don't Destabilize, know. Destabilize, exploit. Destabilize a control. Yeah. And and the it's sad is these children have no future. Their yeah, they're parents not, like are she dead. said. They're not going to school. Their yeah. parents are dead. That sucks. That is yeah, awful. Their, oh. their life is. Ah, uh, and you just we just keep using our iPhones and but, just keep clicking away, not caring. Yeah, we don't care. Just buy it. It's buy like, more shit comes from the store it's nice and shiny it has a very expensive price tag yeah and this is great this is coming out right around the holidays when everyone's oh. out buying shit when it's just wait a second yeah the sh stuff that i'm buying is causing this but there'll be no awareness so i'm sure we'll break sales records be ready to roll out yeah so instead of supporting i guess cobalt mining and yeah. buying expensive iphones Show us some love and help us financially produce the show by heading over to HealthyTalkShow.com slash support. Your financial contribution will ensure we remain unbiased. Help show us some love, HealthyTalkShow.com slash support. Yes, love, HealthyTalkShow.com slash support. We need the love. Give it to us. We record Healthy Talk Show live on Mondays and now Fridays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's 3 a.m. UTC over at HealthyTalkShow.com slash live. Ask at HealthyTalkShow.com and HealthyTalkShow.com forward slash social for all of our social media links. Love and light. Love and light.